And so I told him, I was like, look, I don't care if you think it evaporates out. I just don't want any of that in my food. And you know what he had the nerve to say to me? <clears throat> what was wrong? <clears throat> Story time. What? Story time. Story time, hey, it's that time of week again. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Um, all right, let me finish that story as soon as I'm done with this. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Wa salatu salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabao la yawm ad-deen. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. I hope you're all having a pleasant afternoon or evening. Um, inshallah, everything is going well, and we are back for another episode of Stories of the Prophets. So if you remember last time, we were starting the story of Suleiman, Prophet Suleiman alayhi salam. He was the son of Prophet Dawood. And we know that Suleiman alayhi salam inherited from Dawood alayhi salam, which means he inherited the prophethood and he became a king like his father was. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Suleiman things that he, a type of power and authority that he hadn't given to anyone else before him or after him. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him control of the wind. He gave him control over jinn, the jinn kind. Uh, he could talk to the birds, to the creatures. Um, so he had all of this, his kingship, he had a large army. Um, and so with all of this, Sulaiman alayhi salam was, was a very humble servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day, we started the story last time, one day when he was with his army, he realized that he was missing a bird from his army. This, is, this was the hoopoe bird. And so when the hoopoe bird finally came, it stood in the back and it said, you know, because it was, uh, Suleiman had threatened to punish the, the bird. So it said, I have come to you with knowledge that you don't have. He says, I've come to you from Seba. So this is another land. Um, that's in Yemen. And he says, and I have some news for you. Verily, I saw a woman who has a kingdom there and she has a great, beautiful throne. However, her people, they worship the sun. Her and her people, they worship the sun and they worship others besides Allah. And he was very upset about this. When the sun comes up in the morning and when it sets at night, they prostrate down to this sun. So Sulaiman alayhi salam, uh, if you remember last time, he goes and he wants to call her to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants to show her that even though you've been blessed with so much, that if you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you'll have so much more. And so Sulaiman alayhi salam told the bird, he said, I'll see whether or not you're, you're coming to me with the truth or not. And he said, take this letter that he wrote to her. And, um, and then, and so he went and gave her this letter. And so he gave her this letter and um, moved back. And so this letter basically says to submit to them the, to, and come to their land and submit to them. And so, so now she had sent representatives on her behalf and they came with a gift for Suleiman. They saw that the letter that he wrote, he said, um, he said it was from Suleiman and he said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So they know that he is one who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't worship the sun. And so they, they sent these representatives with a gift from, for Sulaiman. And Sulaiman alayhi salam said, you know, that he doesn't want any of these gifts. He has everything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he needs already, but he wants uh, this, this queen of, of, uh, of Sheba, of Seba. So they went back to her and they said, you know what? You need to go for yourself and try to make peace with the, these people. They saw an army that Sulaiman alayhi salam had like they've never seen before, even controlling the, the creatures and the beasts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now they were planning to go to Sulaiman alayhi salam with their queen. So Sulaiman alayhi salam now, as they're planning, and this is where we pick up our story from last time, as they're planning to travel to Sulaiman, so this is um, so this was the queen of of Sheba of Seba and her people. They're planning on traveling to Sulaiman alayhi salam's land, and so now Sulaiman alayhi salam he gathers his chiefs and his people, and he asks, and so this includes his chiefs and and the people and the jinn, and so he asks them. He says, "Who can bring me the throne?" Of, of, of their people, of the queen of, uh, of Sheba, 
before they arrive here. So now one of the jinn, one of the most powerful jinn, he said, I can bring it to you before you get up from where you're sitting. Now, Sulaiman salam, he used to be available for his people on his throne from morning until the afternoon. So he's basically saying before the afternoon comes, I can have her throne here for you. So he said, and I will bring it in a way where all the jewels and the rubies and the decorations that are on it are exactly intact exactly where where they were before and i'll bring it to you and i'll place it exactly where you want me to put it so then another one of the jinn says and this one um Allah subhanahu wa describes him as one who had knowledge of the revelation of allah he says oh Sulaiman, i will bring you exactly what this other jinn is telling you however i will bring it to you before you can blink your eyes so he's he can bring it instantly to him so, so now she brings, uh, she leaves her palace, she leaves her place, and while she's on this journey, her entire throne is lifted up and brought into Sulaiman Salam's court. So when Sulaiman Salam saw it in front of him, he said, this is from the favors of my Lord upon me. In order to test me to see if I'm grateful if I'm going to show gratitude or if I'm going to be ungrateful. SubhanAllah. You know, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to do something good. He gives us some talent or some skills or some power or some authority. You find that a lot of times people give credit to their own selves. Maybe you score a goal. Maybe you're playing basketball. You make a basket. You score a touchdown. Maybe you do nice artwork or you get a good grade on your test or on an assignment. And instead of thanking Allah, we think that we deserve the credit to ourselves. So we probably haven't done anything as amazing as essentially teleporting a throne from, from somewhere far away in the blink of an eye. But Sulaiman salam is now saying, this is a test on me to see if I'm grateful to Allah. So Sulaiman salam says, and whoever is ungrateful, they're not going to harm Allah in the slightest. When we are ungrateful, it is on us, not on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need our gratitude, doesn't need our thanks, but we need to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Sulaiman salam wanted to do something else. He tells his army, to make a few slight changes in her throne, to renovate it, maybe make it a little bit nicer, make a few small tweaks, some changes. Then he instructed his own palace and throne built where by where her throne would be, except he instructed it to be built over water, on top of water. But instead of being just on water, it's over glass, so on top of the water is glass and you can see the water under the glass, but the glass is so clear, it looks like you're just on top of water. So you can see through it. You can see the fish swimming underneath this glass. So when the queen arrives, and the queen, her name is Bilqis. So when she arrives and she sees her throne, Sulaiman salam now asks her as she sees this throne, he says, is this your throne? Now imagine, she knows her throne is where? It's back home. So she thinks, if it is her throne, then how did it possibly get there? And if it's not her throne, then how did they make an exact copy of her throne? Either way, it's a miracle. Either way, this is something amazing and unbelievable. So she is someone who's worshiping the sun. And she now sees that Sulaiman salam, the one who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is more powerful than her. And he has an even greater kingdom than the kingdom that she has. So she knows that he is Muslim and worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his letter. He said, in the name of Allah, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. And so when he asks her if th this is her throne, she looks at the throne and she says, it looks like it. It looks like my throne. So Sulaiman 
He said, when we were granted the knowledge of Islam, we surrendered to Allah. Meaning everything he has, all of his power, his kingdom, everything he owns, everything he can do, this is all from Allah. Look at the humility of Sulaiman alayhi salam. So now she was told to enter into the area where Sulaiman alayhi salam was. So now she's going to the place that has what? Has the glass, is over water. And so what does she do? She's thinking now she's going to walk on this water. So she lifts her garment up a little bit so that she doesn't get her clothes wet. And so Sulaiman alayhi salam says, you don't need to do this. This is a floor and it's made of glass. So now she's thinking, how amazing is this kingdom of Sulaiman alayhi salam? Everything she had in comparison to what he has is nothing. So she had this great kingdom, but now she sees what Sulaiman alayhi salam has and what he's giving credit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. And she realizes that this is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now she's thinking, you know what? I worship Allah. I worship the son and he worships Allah. He's giving credit of everything he has to Allah. He's humble. He's pious. He's a righteous servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, one of the best ways to teach someone about Islam is to just be good at what you do and to give credit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that you have and everything that you do. So Bilqis, she now realizes the power and the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She was worshiping the sun, but the light of Allah is far greater than the light that the sun could ever bring. The creator, he is the creator of the sun and the heavens and the earth and everything that is in between. So she says, oh my Lord, now after seeing all this, Verily, I wronged my own soul. All the, when I was worshiping the sun, when I was neglecting you, when I was ungrateful to everything that you've given us and given me, she says, oh my Lord, I have wronged my own soul. I surrender to you with Sulaiman, to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. And then her entire army now submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and became Muslim. Look at what she saw to make her appreciate Allah and the power of Allah. Brothers and sisters, boys and girls, we see the miracles of Allah every day all around us. We don't have to see a throne move from one place and get teleported to another. Just look outside, look at the sun, look at the trees, look at how Allah brings the trees back to, the, back to life after they were dead. Look at, look at subhanAllah, look at the clouds and the heavens and the earth all around us. All of these are signs for, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should remember to thank Allah for everything that we have. This was the story of Sulaiman alayhi salam. Inshallah, we will continue next time and I will end with a short poem this time, inshallah. So here's the poem that I'm going to pull up for you. It is a Shel Silverstein poem. And this one is called Anchored. And it's a short one. But here are people and you see their anchor stuck in the water right there. And it goes like this. Our anchor is too big for our ship. So we're sitting here trying to think. If we leave it behind, we'll be lost. If we haul it on board, we will sink. If we sit and keep talking about it, it will soon be too late for our trip. It sure can be rough on a sailor when the anchor is too big for the ship. To me, this is kind of symbolic of a lot of things in life. Uh, maybe problems that you have in life, things that happened in your past, maybe things that were difficult for you in your past. You don't know whether to leave them behind or learn lessons from them and drag them with you. It's, um, you know, to me, that's what the anchor symbolizes. So I hope you enjoyed the poem. Jazakallah khair, everyone, for joining. Subhanakallah, mihamdik, ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfirka wa atubu ilaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.